Hello everyone, uh, it's been uh, a while since I've made a video, so I hope since the last time I made a video, uh, everyone's doing okay. I feel like I say this every time, but uh, this time um, I'm going to rebrand this channel a little bit and try to, you know, be a little more consistent with uploads uh, and try to get back in the rhythm of it. So I wanted to start kind of softly on uh, a book review and specifically a uh, off-the-shelf uh, book review that we haven't done in quite a, some time. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So if you might have noticed, the author's name of this book called Transparent that we're going to be reviewing today, her last name is Whipple, which is the same as mine, if you see my by the channel name that I've had for years. And no, <laughs> there is no relation. We are not cousins. We are not siblings or anything, but it is pretty interesting. We grew up in the same area, um, but she married into the name, which is, I just found that to be a little side note. In fact, that's that's actually the reason I did buy the book in the first place. I went to a very small bookshop, and I saw, some, you know, obviously you look at something with a unique name as my last name is to some degree. Uh, it's unique anyways, and you kind of go, oh, okay. How about, how about I just check this book out? And you know what? It uh, It's actually not the worst book in the world. Obviously, it's written for more uh, teenagers and more pre-teens, I think, primarily. And if you're not in the demographic from age 20, 12 to 22, you know, or maybe even below that, I don't think you're going to get as much of a kick out of it um, as somebody like me. Uh, I didn't really get it to kick out of it as much either. So anyways, without the, the without all the rambling, let's just get right into the plot. So the plot consists of, um, involves a, a, a young girl, I think 16. We're not really privy to this information much. Um, but, you know, th this gets into a complaint I'll have later um, on in my tiny complaints that I have and the problems I have with this book. But there isn't really a whole lot of describing on um, what certain characters look like, and uh, it, it also goes with age, too. So I think she's 16. Uh, she has this powers of in invisibility, but in a really messed up way. Um, you know, it kind of reminded me the way that she was described being born invisible and being dropped on her head because they could see an ultrasound, obviously, of her, but they didn't actually, it, she just slid right out of their hands, it sounded like, it seemed like, anyways. That's the scene that's presented. And like I said, not a lot of details, but I don't know if, you know, if you've been a fan on this channel long enough, you know that I'm a big Bleach fan. And in Bleach, there's a moment where Lloyd and, and Royd and is shown about these twin brothers that are the Quincy's, and it is like that's for some reason that's the kind of vibe and the power and the and like the the weird you know the nurses that are all in like blackface i kind of imagine that for some reason um obviously it doesn't it's just something that just came to mind to to my mind when i was reviewing this right now um this this power isn't really explained um thoroughly like what extent it is but what i do find it interesting is throughout the book is we kind of get these like little glimpses of well, what what is the extent of it you know we don't really get to see what she looks like we get no descriptions i think that's genius i do think that's a pretty nice thing they could just easily describe what she looks like but she doesn't even know because she can't because she's invisible in every way even her saliva is invisible which is very interesting because usually that's not the case um, it's more of a chameleon thing where you blend in your background um and as we go throughout pretty quickly, the, the pacing of this book is very quickly, very expansive um, in a short amount of pages. It's only about 300 pages or so. Um, and during this time, there is this drug that is brought up called Radiasure. And basically, it's something that people took during the Civil, um, the Cold War um, in you know, the 1960s, you know, and because of this radiation, they, you know, slowly but surely gain these, you know, abilities and powers because the next generation was passed on, you know, through birth effects. And, um, it is pretty interesting. Um, I will say 
although it is a little grounded, it does seem a little strange how these abilities go. Because, like, say her brother has abilities of, like, being able to control helium in his body. And, like, that is pretty complex. You know, that is not something that you would think generations of just taking this drug uh, would produce. You know, invisibility... Uh, maybe blending in your background like a chameleon could definitely be possible because animals can do it, right? And, you know, we could someday mimic that. But when it comes to some of the powers like Graham has of flying around, not just... I thought he had wings because of the descriptions of this older brother, but um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. But I just think the powers sometimes can be a little bit too complex um, from just based on that drug. Um... But the, again, again, suspension of disbelief, fantasy, you know, kind of got to move on, right? But it's just something that came to mind. Uh, but <laughs> I, I really did enjoy it, though. Uh, I, I enjoyed the powers that were presented. They weren't, you know, super flashy or in your face or anything, so that, that was kind of nice. Um, uh, let's see, what other notes did I write down? Uh, the other thing that makes the plot interesting is the fact that she has to run away from her father who is abusive you know this man who uh we see has this really repulsive and really disgusting power this this is where i think the author natalie whipple really shines i think her uh you know having these different abilities that are the people are born with that are while sympathetic are pretty gross like he was born supposedly with an ability to make women always swoon for him and women will always just love him you know no matter what like and he can just manipulate him but you know, by releasing these pheromones from his uh the pores on his body and that's that's really sick because he he has all these women, all these different wives, all these different kids. He doesn't have them in the same place, otherwise they revolt against him. But it is really messed up, you know. That I think a really under uh, underutilized thing in this book uh, was the fact that um, <laughs> was the fact that uh, he actually even made his mom have these pheromones right even his mom fell for it so he never knew if his mother loved him for who he was or for his pheromones that right there is nice writing you know it's a bow it's a it's a little pretty bow it's a sympathetic villain but then when you meet him you understand that there is maybe when he was a child there was sympathy for him maybe when he was with um um, I'm trying to think of the, the woman, the girl's name. Um, Fiona, Fiona is the main character's name. I, I'm, I'm completely sorry, I, I meant, forgot to mention that. But Fiona, uh, his mother, you know, it seems like she was the first one. She actually tried to fall in love with him. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going on here. Um, there's, there's, you know, without getting too far into it, the plot uh, doesn't, doesn't, isn't too thick. But at the same time, does have a kind of adult themes in it, you know, you know this abusive, you know, uh, male father figure, but in a way that is related to power more, uh, rather than just, you know, alcoholism or uh, in you know inadequacy in his own life, which, you know, will appeal to more teens. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, it's a nice little touch. Um, but he, when he finally does show up at the end, you are completely disgusted with this character that's been built up for so long. Um, he did want his daughter to murder these people just for radiosure, this this miracle drug, you know, thing. Um, you know what I really what I really liked though, the part that really attached me to this story was this woman. You know, th you know her mother and Fiona having to just start in this new town, make a name for herself. Um, you know, it's um, you know makes plenty of new friends. You know, has to try to navigate this this changing you know world that they're in, where they're in a different syndicate. There's all these syndicates now, 
uh, you know, you know, her father owns a certain, you know, chunk of land in America because, you know, he has all these underground syndicates and now they're in Arizona and there's a different syndicate there that's, that's you know, like this guy named Juan, supposedly. We don't really get to see Juan and I, I don't really understand why he was brought up other than the fact that, you know, like, kind of created divisions among different characters, you know, from the beginning because they're like, they don't trust each other like I don't, I don't trust you because maybe you're working for him kind of thing but it, it is a little disappointing that we don't get to see him or really get mentioned of him again so hopefully in the second book that's cleared up there is a second book called blindsided which uh i already purchased so i'll definitely be reading that in the near future um and this is a good segue into characters overall i think they're handled pretty well um, you know, Fiona is obviously the main character. She's got, you know, some spunkiness, um, a little bit too, you know, but, you know, she wears kind of like really, really colorful, like 80s clothes from what I is described. But at the same time, if you were invisible your whole life, you would want a little pizzazz. Um, one thing that I think is kind of cool is that her goal, while it's a very simple one, obviously, to, to, to get away from her father, uh, her other goal is to just pass math, which I think is a very relatable and very kind of endear endearing kind of uh, trait that she has, that she's still trying to do school, um, even though she doesn't really know it that well. And then they even say, are you dropped as a baby? And she's like, yeah, I am. I'm invisible. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you expect? Uh, so that was, that was a nice callback, too. Um... Uh, I th you know, I think the collection of characters was fine, like I was saying earlier, but uh, I think, you know, um, there's a character called Bay. Um, I can't remember her entire name <laughs> because so many characters call her different names. It's kind of hard to remember her whole name, so Bay is going to be her character name for this review. Uh, she's a pretty solid character. You know, she's the typical... Uh, you know, like the the first character that someone meets at a school, you know, when you know everyone else is a bully and all that. She's got a very cool ability, in my opinion, uh, being able to mimic different people's voices, and then it has like this screeching ability, which I kind of think is a little corny, but <laughs> uh, the mimicking of different voices is very cool. I, I like that. That's a very unique powers i mean we've seen it in other series even now jujutsu kaisen does it but it's or hunter hunter does it for sure but it's you know it's not very common anyways um but i feel like some characters like brad you know while there was characterization with like his backstory and stuff he doesn't really do service a lot you know, he just kind of pushes the plot, plot, the plot forward, and there's other characters like um, her love interest. I, I don't. I'm terrible with names, especially ones that they're not. Their names aren't mentioned that much. We don't really get a picture of what this guy looks like, but I imagine like a skinny. We kind of get a very brief description of him being a very skinny, scrawny, uh, you know, glasses wearing dude. Um, but kind of has this like kind of you know good heart to him he's got a really weird power that's not really explained either he can just take layers off of things and then add them on which if you think that's confusing uh you're not the only one because i didn't understand a damn word of that <laughs> that didn't make any sense um but yeah he he can see her um and her invisibility and I won't, like, spoil, like, what she looks like, but it is a very welcomed surprise actually getting to know what she looks like after so many pages. Uh, it's a very cathartic feeling of, like, wow, okay, so that's what this person looks like. Very, <clears throat> I would say, generic-looking girl, but the fact that she finally gets to have that, she gets to have that piece that she's been missing, as she puts it, is a very sweet thing. Um... And, of course, you know, teen drama, they don't get along, you know, at first, and they do. She has feelings for the other guy, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you know, that's kind of what drags the book down sometimes is teen drama. But it, it is still entertaining. It's like watching uh, reality TV. Of course, you're going to, like, watch it because, you know, it's reality TV. It's drama. Um, uh, you know, some some complaints, though, some some small problems, I think. 
that kind of hampered the series besides that um you know, like i said you know to reiterate the other point it's really a book that's only for somebody that's 12 to maybe 20 um i would say is the range i you know as a 20 as a 20 plus year old i can actually look at it and go oh this is a pretty good series uh it's a pretty good book uh fast pace all this you know but at the same time i don't really get the same enjoyment as a girl that would be a 12 year old girl or, or a 16 year old girl might get um this isn't a very popular book so it's it's a little bit harder to do this review uh, for that purpose that for other purposes like that but um uh you know the conflict with her father is another problem that i think is pretty severe um i it wasn't really handled that well in the way that there was so much build up so much tension that you felt um you know while everything couldn't be normal and then it's dealt with and it's very very quickly dealt with there's no wands that you know and it's kind of disappointing that we don't really get a longer conflict uh he manipulates bay of court you know of course you know as her being her her main friend and it's really sad and really gross but it just he just gets bested and that's it you know we don't really get to ever see uh, you know, of course, she has a brother, another, a younger brother named Miles that actually comes and, like, has a similar ability as her father and, you know, kind of saves the day. But we don't, it's just a battle of minds, which is fine, but it does kind of lend itself to being so, so much set up for action or to some kind of conclusion like that, only to have no ties all ties cut but no real conclusion so hopefully that's wrapped up in the second book um and there's only two books so uh, if it hasn't been wrapped up in the second book then you know it's not going to um the story despite you know possibly being for younger generation you know younger kids um uh, with the whole love triangle thing i think it has a ton to offer and you know moving forward i i am really looking forward to more uh reading of her books because she actually does have this really nice uh way of wording things that i think a lot of different audience a very general audience can understand so anyways uh uh if you <laughs> enjoyed the video give it a like and you know subscribe if you want more uh, in-depth uh, book reviews. Uh, this will probably be the longest review I will do in a while, so enjoy it, and uh, I'll see you till next time. Bye.